welcome to this week's instalment of our weekly uh, reading group. Uh, today, I'm really excited to welcome uh, Yutao Sun. Uh, he is a first year PhD student at Tsinghua University, advised by um, Zhang Yong Wang, um, and he's working as a research intern um, at Microsoft Research Asia, mentored by Li Dong. Um, the research interests is the backbone of LLMs, um, and today he's going to be presenting his paper, um, which is uh, You Only Cache Once, Deco um, Decoder Decoder Architecture for Language Models. Um, it's an architecture for LLMs which only caches key value pairs uh, once to improve the inference memory, pre-fold latency, and a throughput across context lengths and model sizes. So really excited to welcome you today, uh, Yutao. Uh, the floor is, is yours. Okay, thank you, thank you, Daniel. And as, uh, yes, um, you also a uh, first year PhD student from Tsinghua University. And I also see that you have invited Ethan for his mini um, so you must be familiar with that. Yeah. So let's get started. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a stress a scratch, and uh, we were here. As a researcher, I, I was always thinking about what is the next stage of neural network architectures. And now we have transformers. Transformers seems good enough. And and in, in my thoughts, I think the neural, neural network architectures, the first stage may be CN and RN, and, and it, it works well on large scale data sets. And that's the time when the, the deep learning starts to win out. And in that time, we have a large scale supervised data set and it outperforms other traditional methods. And now we have Transformer. Transformer is very pretty because pretty is a huge amount of unsupervised data. And Transformer is very good at uh, modeling pretty data. And, uh, and I personally believe that Transformer is may, maybe the best option now. And uh, of course, we will make some marginal or incremental improvements. Uh, but Transformers is very good at pre-training data, and uh, and the second one is uh, we can scaling up transformers model sets uh, to get a much better performance. And I believe, and uh, now twenty twenty four we are here. We we find that transformer is good enough to um, tackling with many tasks, including language or vision or video, so, so much modalities. And in the future, what 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 will it be like? And what shortcomings that transformers can not do, and and in our perspective, maybe the the long kind of long time context domain will take a much bigger place than now. First, if we want a long term agent and uh, to record uh, our life, it its length will be much longer than today's maybe 2000, 4000, that, that's very small. And the second one is we, if we have a long context, large, large language model and took, uh, to deal with so, so, uh, language or videos to, to record our uh, everyday data. And Transformer is, is very, very inefficient in a long context domain because it's own square complexity. And and here I believe that inference efficiency is very much more important in the future. Um, and we will talk about this quantitatively later. And uh, here's our contents. Uh, today I will mainly talk about uh, Yoko, but uh, before that, I will talk about our previous efforts. Like uh, in the last year, we Focus on linear complexity models, and we have RedNet. Uh, maybe you are also familiar with that. If not, I will give a short introduction about that. And why linear complexity model is not successful or not entirely successful, and I will give an explanation. And based on the linear complexity models, we will have some hybrid modeling solutions. And then we will find that these methods are not good enough. So we have Yoko. Yoko is enough for language modeling. And it, in today's perspective, I believe Yoko is good enough in all of the tasks. And Yoko is a uh, macro layout architecture. And I will talk about why macro layout matters. And in the experiment, uh, the two things are important. The first one is the long series performance. Uh, that is the essential part that linear complex models cannot do. And the second one is the inference advantage. 
Okay, and in the first part, I will talk about RedNet. RedNet uh, is a very simple and elegant representation. As, and I, I believe all of you are familiar with traditional self-attention. Self-attention is softmax, QQ transpose, plus, bias, and multiply with V. Uh, that, yeah, it is very familiar. And and retention, and uh, we will call it retention because it, it is a uh, linear, it is a linear comparison model, and I believe, and we believe it may memorize something. And here we remove the softmax behind, and here we change the modeling capacity from quadratic to linear uh, without the softmax function. And here are, we also made some modifications, and here we have these. Uh, Causal mask with an exponential decay, and the exponential decay will contribute to the recurrent representation. The recurrent representation. Quick, 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 quick question actually, because the obviously people okay. in the audience have all um, levels of familiarity with this kind of stuff. So sorry. Uh, so RetNet is some prior work that's kind of being explained as the kind of some preliminaries for. You only catch once. Is this? Yeah, correct? it's a component in Yoko, and I believe it is very important. Okay, if it is, is it a novel component or is it a component that's previous that you're building upon? Uh, in the last few reps, that is, uh, it's a model we use to modeling uh, the language model. And now, if you have you have read the Yoko paper, we have a self decoder and a cross decoder, and a self decoder is RedNet. Okay. Got it. And and just to understand, sorry. So this D, N, M. Like what? What's sorry? What's the dimensionality of D compared to B? Could you just uh, just just so we're all on the same foundation? Just sorry, quickly explain on a high level again. Sorry, the key insight as to why the retention is um is is not quadratic and the attention is just like going into details a bit about the dimensionality of the terms and explaining um. Uh, yeah, kind of explaining explaining the rationale there. Okay, to to understand that why retention is a linear form, I think the, the, this slide will help. Go. Oh. Okay. So so in this equation, if we if you see it for the first time, it it is very it is very simple. If uh, we have a hidden states as a for recurrent inference and. The, and as it has the following forms, gamma and gamma, <coughs> gamma at minus one, and the second, and the second term is k n transpose to v n, and this is element wise, and we add we add them together with uh the k factor, and it is a linear, it, it is a linear form, it is, uh, and here we have a figure, and uh, I believe it is uh simple enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, the difference between retention and the, the previous uh, linear retention is that we don't have uh, the uh, denominant form and it, and it will help to stabilize the whole pre-training, but, but that is not the main point. And chunkwise representation uh, is a natural engineer solution for log, long document training. And we have the first form. The first form is parallel representation. It it is friendly in maybe maybe in GPU, but it has in this this equation is a parallel form, and the second one is a linear form. And if we combine this together, we will have a hybrid form, and we name it as chunkwise representation. Um, the main insight here is that we can use parallel representation in in the chunk, and we uh, use rep recurrent representations in cross chunk. And here we have some mathematical details, uh, but that, that is not the main point. Uh, we will pass it and we just cut into the performance. Uh, in, in the last year, we evaluate the linear complex model in most of the well-known language modeling benchmarks, including superglue or uh, Harness evaluations and in, and in, in these benchmarks, uh, RedNet or other linear complex models such as Mamba, it, it is very close to transforming. It, it it is almost comparable and it is, it is also a scalable model. If we scaling up the model size, the performance will 
uh, will increase as we expected. But however, there is a still gap because linear capacity is always worse than the quadratic capacity uh, in some well-known benchmarks such as MLMU. Uh, as you can see, transformer is much better in average performance in, of MLMU, but this but this this linear transformer variance is much worse. And and here the insight that trans, uh, all of the linear capacity model is not good at recalling. Recalling is a very important, very important features for large modeling and language language modeling. But for example, if you wanna rephrase the uh, prompt over again, and then you will have to retrieve the tokens one by one. And and that is uh, also uh, you can also see these features in any benchmark. And and here we have. A, linear complex models and uh, we have RedNet. RedNet is good enough for modeling most of the language modeling tasks because most of the language modeling task is uh, local sensitive and we don't maybe we don't need uh, global information. Uh, but uh, there is the uh, inference uh, advantage and we will pass to the Yoko part. And here we have hybrid modeling. Uh, the key insight here is to combine the retention and the attention layers. Uh, and the attention layers will will help to retrieve the previous tokens. And in our experiment, and uh, three and one research achieves lossless bounce modeling. And we have two evaluations. The first one is pass key retrieval. Pass key retrieval is, um, is a very simple task. And, uh, Later we will have a needle in his stack uh, task, and uh, the second one is uh, their schools, and in their schools, uh, RedNet Plus uh, is comparable with uh, traditional transformers. And here, I here we have the conclusion is the hybridization of uh, ret retention and uh, attention layers is very essential, and uh, and three and one ratio is uh, is good enough if. If we increase the retention part, the performance will decrease a lot. And here, uh, retention modeling is widely used today. And we, for example, if we, we have Jamba, Jamba is a hybridization between Mamba layers and uh, attention layers. And uh, here are some rumors that we still also use this design, but we can uh, make sure. OK, um, we have some introduction about RedNet and uh, RedNet plus the hybrid, hybrid modeling. And, and uh, yeah, the previous part is important for understanding Yuko. Uh, the first one is that the hybridization is not a good solution. And here are two reasons. The first one is uh, for four plus maximal accelerations because if we further increase the return part, we will have a batch, we will have a better latency and a better throughput, but the performance will drop a lot. And and four times maximum acceleration as KV says, uh, KV cache saving is the limitation. And the second one is that the whole model is, is still quadratic complexity because we, int we introduce attention layers over again. And the second one is that if we think it's over again, what is the op optimal acceleration solution for lossless non significance modeling? The lossless, uh, we, we usually mean that the uh, the new model should be comparable with transformer in long sequence modeling, all of the long sequence modeling tasks. The first one is that maybe we think that the ON complexity KV cache is compulsory. So maybe just one piece of KV comparison, KV cache is enough. And in our experiment, we prove that it is enough. The second, the second one is that the ON complexity single step inference is essential for token retrieval because we have to uh, yeah we have to retrieve the token one by one so we yeah we, we must see all of the previous tokens instead of uh, compressing it into a fixed size fitness states and and as i said before yoko is a micro layout architectures and we name it as decoder decoder and in transformer we have encoder decoder and decoder only also of course we have encoder only transformers but encoder only transformer is not capable of generation scenarios so let's talk about these two architectures the first one is that encoder decoder encoder decoder is uh, famous uh, maybe three years ago we have k5 and 
the, the feature of encoder decoder is that we use by directional modeling in the encoder part, and we use the, the causal masking in the decoder part. And the advantage of encoder decoder architecture is that we can save layer with layer wise KV cache, just like you could, because uh, in the decoder layer, all of the KV cache come from the last state of the encoder part. And however, the most serious shortcoming of encoder decoder is that it is struggle to implement if it's in the pre-training, the pre-training means that may, may be a nice token prediction. For for example, if the first part of for encoder decoder, we have to cut the whole sequence into two parts. Uh, if the first part is is long, is very long, and the second part is short enough, uh, we we can only calculate the loss function in the last part. And if the Second part is long enough, and the, the first one is short enough. It is much similar to the decoder architecture. So decoder only architectures is the default one in modern large language models, like the GPT or all of it, including GPT and the Llama. And the most, however, uh, decoder only architectures uh, faced with heavy KV cache and the pre filling cost because. In decoder only uh, architecture, the pre-filling and the generation is the whole same thing. They, they have the same flops, and they have, and in the pre-filling, we have to calculate all of the computations, and it, it is computation heavy and it is memory heavy. And in case that uh, some maybe not familiar with the generation pipeline, and I will give a brief introduction. Uh, yeah, it's just like WLM or other inference engines, uh, the generation has two stages. And the first one is prefilling stage. In prefilling stage, all of the tokens, uh, most of the prompt tokens are encoded by the large language models. The language models encodes all the user query into KV cache for the generation in the, the second stage generation. And the, the, the prompt token are Encoded into KV cache, and in and in this stage, all of the parameters in the larger models is used. And in this stage, the the complexity is on square, and we are in the sequence length because of we use self attention mechanisms. And the second one is generation. In the generation stage, uh, we decode the next token one by one auto regressively, and in each step, we use the previous OLN KV cache, where L is the number of layers and N is the sequence length. And in this stage, the computation is memory bounded because the KV cache is very heavy. Okay, let's. Here I will officially talk, talk about Yoko. Yoko is uh, mo different different from RedNet. RedNet is a. RedNet redesigns the self potential, but Yoko is a uh, hyper architecture uh, instead of. Encoder decoder and uh, decoder only architectures. We propose decoder decoder architectures. The first decoder is self decoder, and uh, the second one is cross decoder. In self decoder, we use some self efficient efficient self attention mechanism, uh, and by default, we use RedNet here because RedNet is a linear complex model. And also, if you like, you can use sliding window attention, which is also a linear, linear complex models, and. And the self decoder as the output will you used as the KV cache. And in the second decoder, which is cross cross decoder, and the cross tension is computed by the query. Query is the input of this model, and the KV is from the shared KV cache. And and in that way, all of the layers are also use the shared KV cache generated from the self decoder. And here we distangle the prefilling and the generation stage, and I will talk about it later. And you only cache once means that we only cache once global KV cache. Of course, if you if you uh, see it seriously, then there are also some key anyway, but it is a local part, which means that it is a constant memory if if we increase the sequence length. And here we share keys and values with cross attention, and that is the second part. And the key difference between decoder decoder and encoder decoder is that the connection is stacked. 
which means that the output of the self decoder also used as the input of the cross decoder. Uh, if you use encoder decoder scale, you will cut the whole sequence into half. And however, if you see it as a black box, uh, the decoder decoder architecture will be the same as the previous decoder only architectures, and which means that we can use next token prediction just like. We we used it in the decoder only architectures. Here is the most is important part that Yuko is very has a very big inference advantage. Uh, as as stated before, in generation we have two stages. The first one is prefilling, and in prefilling stage, transformer requires O N O O L N square D computation computation to encode KV cache with self-attention, where L is the number of layers and N is the sequence length and D is the hidden dimension. And however, you could only need O L and D computation because we because in the previous stage we use self-decoder and the self-decoder is a linear complex model. And in this previous stage we can skip the cross decoder because we don't we, we don't need to use it. Because the the subsequent tokens uh, use the KV cache from here, not from here, so we can just skip here. And for the context memory, transformer saves KV cache layer wisely with O L N D JQ memory, where well, L is the number of layers and N is the sequence length and D is the hidden dimension. And Yoko only saves KV cache once, where the memory usage is only. L plus N D, uh, where the first one is that L L is number layer, the number of layers, and here is the self decoder uh, cache, and it is constant with the sequence length, and uh, the second form is N D N D is the shared KV cache, and when the sequence is is very very large, and N will be much much bigger than L, so, uh, and we can say L times KV cache then transformer. And then we have experiments, and the first one is the language modeling performance, which means general language task instead of long sequence task. And in general language modeling task, and we can see that we have scaling log experiment, and the results show that uh, the scaling log is even. We first see that it it is comparable, and we can we say that maybe it's even better than the standard transformer. And uh, here we have two variants. The first one is that Yoko as WA as WA means the sliding window attention, and Yoko here with means the gated red net. Gated red net is uh, a little better than the as WA, and uh, both of them is better than transformer. And the gains come from the hybrid architectures of attention and the retention. And the previous hybrid models or a Jamba, um, Jamba experiments can prove that. And uh, the second one, we verify our model with some strong open source transformers, including OpenLama and the StableLM. The, result, the results show that Yoko is comparable or better with these open source models. And these are just some. Harness evaluation, which means that the sequence length here is not very long. And the previous RedNet or Mamba is is already comparable with this uh, benchmarks, and Yoko is even better than Transformer. And the second one, the most important one, is that we claim that we achieve lossless long sequence modeling, and we we have done many, many experiments to prove that. First, we continue pre-training our model to one million sequence lens. One million sequence lens is, uh, I believe it is very long in today's open source language models and only a few of them reached that lens. And here we have some experiments. The first one is that needle in his, in his deck experiment and Ryuko achieves near perfect accuracy and there are some some points that it is not 100%, but it, it doesn't matter because we only have three besides and we compare Yoko with other transformer open source models here. Here is middle multi needle haystack experiment. And here we have Young, we have WM, large wood models from Berkeley. And we also have MIDI CPM and the chat GM, both from our <laughs> University. And 
the mini CPM is a smaller model and the chat, but chat GL M3 is a six or seven models. And the, the results here show that Yoko is comparable even better. Uh, this uh, last sequence needle multi needle in his deck experiments and we only have three B and some of them even uh, seven B models. And here we prove that Yoko is comparable with well-known transformers, including mini CPM and chat GM, and some of them are already successful. Here we also carry out their growth experiment, and here we have some scaling results. And with the sequence length increase, uh, some previous linear complex models, including MABA and uh, sparse transformers, uh, its performance is consistent and it, do not show a good, 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 better performance in plasti. Uh, and for transformer and the Yoko, the performance is better with the increase, increase in sequence length. Quick, quick question. What's the rationale behind the models compared against? Um, and what's the decision when it comes to benchmarking across other, other models? Like, in, like, for example, why not include Kind of llama models, for example. Uh, llama is, uh, I think, llama is a, a model checkpoint, and customer here we use llama characters already. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Um, okay. Sure. And uh, here comes to the inference experiments, and uh, we, we we here show that Yoko is much much better than uh, transformers. Here we we have shown that that Yoko is capable with maybe one millisecond less, so it is fair to talk about the speed and the memory cost at this length. The first that we saved nine or four times memory saving at at this length, and and we break down the memory usage here. The Green one is the model width. It is very small. So here we use three model sets, and the data type is uh, BF BF sixteen. So maybe this is six GB, and it is very small. And at at this length, trans transformer use most of the GPU memory here. It is more than one hundred GB. Uh, we can't store it in a single A one hundred GPU. And we have, we have to we have to use tensor parallels of inference. However, for your code, the KV cache you see is marginal. It is if you can you, if you don't see it carefully, you you won't notice it. Uh, it is a very big improvement. And for pre-feeding latency, uh, at yeah at this length, transformer need one hundred and. Uh, 80 seconds, maybe three minutes, uh, to encode the to encode the whole tank context. But uh, Yoko only needs six seconds, and it is thirty times improvement. And here we will prove that KV cache Yoko is all, almost negligible. Uh, of course, if we use maybe uh, one hundred million, it will come to a question again. But for today's application, it is negligible. And here we greatly save the refilling legacy and we save the memory savings a lot. Also, we can accelerate the whole generation uh, through put metric. It is will also, it's also much better. So you can make long savings deployment practical for industrial usage or maybe for future larger models uh, deployment and the usage, it, it will be practical. But for now, for transformers, it's, maybe it's, it's just a toy model. And uh, OK, that's the uh, main experiment in Yoko paper. And why Yoko will be the default backbone in the future? Uh, first, we, we show that in maybe all of the uh, known benchmarks and the experiments, Yoko is comparable and better than standard transformers maybe we use llama architectures by default and and in, and in performance you don't have to worry about anything and the second one is that there are huge efficiency advantages including the preferability the overall support and the gpu memory usage and the third one is maybe more important in the future that the 
plus because demand will grow eventually uh, for maybe long uh, long term agents or some uh, video streaming um, language models. And uh, our code is open source here. And finally, I will talk about our future work. Uh, the first one is that the multimodality models, and we we are already working on that. And the multimodality, we will especially care about video because video is a natural scenario for long series modeling. Uh, for image, maybe we have uh, so hundreds of uh, patches, but for video, maybe we have uh, 10 seconds, so one minute, so maybe one, one hour videos. Uh, it is a natural scenario for long series model, and today's transform can't do it very efficiently. And and if we have a very efficient and strong video large language models, we can do many things, including some maybe maybe we can do real time video understanding because of the uh, uh, low prefilling latency and the low cost generation because of the uh, small KV cache and maybe maybe possible we can interrogate it into an invalid agent. And the second future work is uh, native sparse attention. The sparse attention doesn't mean the previous uh, att sparse attention published by OpenAI. Uh, we, we hear mean that maybe we can use some da vector database technique into the uh, other models. For example, we can build in, we can build index for the key, uh, key value and maybe we can use some algorithm for sparse attention. And here maybe uh, Yoko, uh, you could maybe save 99% of the modeling problem, but the only one we can solve is that in generation stage, we have to calculate the all full attention. And, maybe, and here we we hope that maybe sparse attention will solve that. And Yoko here also have a strong advantage because Yoko only have uh, one layer QV cache. So we just need to Maybe we just need one KV index in, instead of maybe index for the each layer, which is transformer. And uh, the third one is the hardware software core design. And there are some successful examples such as Grok. Grok is as a future infringe hardware, it has a high SRAM bandwidth. And, and maybe, maybe we can combine Yoko and BNET. BNET is is a quantized, uh, quantized model, and Yoko is a uh, Yoko you know, enables very small QV cache, and because Yoko's QV cache is very small, the the cost of maybe we don't need a very big SRAM, maybe a small one is good enough. So, so if if we can use SRAM for storing the QV cache, the latency will be much better than Yoko. Okay, here's my personal contact. That's all. Thank you. Amazing. Well, that was a really, really great talk. Uh, yeah, let's give a big round of applause, everyone, uh, for incredible paper. Um, yeah, I mean, I, um, I have to be totally honest. I didn't follow every single aspect of that, and I think perhaps not everybody um, not everybody would have followed every single aspect, but it's definitely something we're going to dive through into lots of detail. Um, I definitely have a lot of questions, um, but maybe to start off, I can say if anyone in the room has any high-level questions um, or student questions, then feel free to go ahead. Uh, otherwise, I can I can kick off. Um, okay, I'll kick off then. So, like, yeah, one thing I was thinking before the last page was exactly this point about a bit net and how this is very complementary to that and it does seem as though the cost and the speed is going to go massively down and i guess i mean how low do you think it's gonna get like how, like let's say in the next two years or so how much faster do you think we're going to be able to what, what do, you, do you think i guess like so obviously with the kind of um moore's law of um Processor design and everything, we saw exponential growth for many, many years. Do you think we're at the beginning of a similar trend where we're going to see improvements in the representational capacity so we can use one bit or 1.58 bits if we have three states? And we see the hardware that's designed to actually represent 
uh, these as kind of one or 1.58 bit architectures. We see things like Yoko massively reducing the memory required for storing the KV cache. And there's going to be continued innovations that do see continued exponential speed improvements for many years to come. Is that your prediction or do you think we're going to hit a ceiling relatively soon? There's also new hardware entirely that's like incredibly low power. Obviously, the brain runs on a few watts and is incredibly like um, incredibly sparsely uh, connected and is incredibly power efficient and so on. Um, so I guess there's a long way we can go if we kind of accept that this is the fundamental processing unit we need. And then there just seems like endless opportunities to push the, the speed and cost further and further. Yeah, I don't know. I guess where do you think we're at? If we, if we accept that we're at the beginning of this new Moore's law for kind of LLM inference um, speed, do you think that's what, what we are? Do you think we see many, many years of exponential gains coming ahead? What's your prediction? Uh... <laughs> that is a tough question, but uh, for BNet, BNet is not it's not my work, so I won't talk about it. But uh, it, it, it yeah, it's just an imagination. Uh, but I can, but I can be sure that the today's maybe today's inference, uh, inference hardware maybe we can we still use uh, we A one hundred maybe H one hundred. It won't be in the future because it it is. It's, yeah, it is designed for the uh, training infrastructure, yeah. and yeah, yeah, that's the thing we can ensure that the future's yeah. inference yeah. hardware will be much more. Uh, maybe in cost, um, we will have a comp a one hundred comparable inference hardware, but it will be much cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing we I, can I, see. The the fact that we've like repurposed hardware for training and inference. And I guess for a long time, they weren't that different, like, because people were doing, st I mean, back in I mean, a few years ago, people were still doing inference on float 32 or float 16. Um, obviously, you were kind of, I don't know, like in conventional deep learning, like, obviously, you needed a much bigger batch size to do training. But also, if you want to do like heavy batching deployment, like the, the hardware requirements for training and inference weren't miles apart. And therefore, you repurpose the hardware for both in many cases. But obviously, with things like BitNet, where you can do inference with one bit, and you still need to train with the full precision, obviously, that creates a massive difference between the two. Um, the fact that, yeah, as I know, an inference, particularly when you then have these like, um, mixture of depths and these like sparse and mixture of experts where you kind of have different paths that trace through the network at inference time. Um, that's another thing that kind of pushes inference and training further apart. And it does seem as though having like hardware that's very optimized for inference and hardware that's very optimized for training starts to make more and more sense as these two paradigms kind of diverge further and further apart. Is that a pretty, again, these are very high level questions, but do you in general see like optimal inference and optimal training as having very different requirements that might mandate totally different hardware. Is that where you imagine things might go? I, I believe that training and inference is, is much more different now. In previous, maybe it is very similar. And yeah. Yeah, but it's because first of all, we, we already have quantization, but quantization is not probably good enough in today's hardware. Uh, yeah. We are agree with that. And maybe for bit is very, it's while you in this days, uh, maybe we'll have a lower, lower bit quantization techniques such as being added. And being added will, the, 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 one of the contributions in being added that we can use, uh, we can use addition yeah. instead of multiplication. That, that, that is another thing, maybe being that it's a, it's a much, much, yeah. Uh, aggressive yeah. methods in hardware. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but for Yoko, Yoko is <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. more grounded. Uh, it's a more yeah, grounded yeah. model. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure that the Bitnet papers have spurred a lot of new startups, like trying to redesign chips, like for one bit inference and things. I, I, I'm, I'm sure. Um, yeah, the scale, because we, we had been that um, in one of our, oh no, I, I went through that one, but yeah, we did that in one of our reading groups and the kind of scaling laws for the number of parameters and the arithmetic intensity, like we're really, really good. The scaling laws up to very, very big models just keep keep going. So it seems like BitNet is a very viable solution for these very, very large models, which is which is really exciting. Um, yeah. Um, 
another question is like so i've been thinking well i had a, a chat with well yeah a few a few kind of people in the rag space recently about like yeah the extent to which rag i mean i guess this is related to what you're saying about the spot tension with building index for key value retrieval it's somewhat it's not related i guess like do you it's a bit of a separate question but again it just relates to maybe the increasing sparsity of these architectures like obviously the way the brain works is that it's not like a data source and then a LLM that does like dense batching and the inference and it retrieves from this like totally separate memory bank. I mean, the, the, the brain, for example, does both inference and effectively is a massive database of vectors as well. It's kind of got both together. And I, I wonder like whether you imagine that basically as like the kind of, we get very, very long context windows, the, the insights for how you do um, index and key value retrieval inside the architecture itself gets better and we can do more sophisticated retrieval for the in for the memory that's actually inside the forward pass of the LLM you might see rag and the LLM merge together more so maybe instead of it being like a total different vector database that then gets passed into this LLM that actually the memory and the long-term memory is kind of more hazily defined and it's more kind of in this kind of very sparse LLM where there's very large memory banks that are kind of massive, you know, massive kind of um, heavy caches and stuff like this. Like, do, do you see RAG and LLMs like merging over time a little bit and becoming less modular? Or do you think there will always be this like very clear modular specification between the memory store and the uh, I, I think it's probably <laughs> the possibility of our policy. Uh, yes, yeah, RAG is, uh, is a very widely known technique nowadays. and and for brain, and I say today's uh, like models or then neural networks, neural networks is very different uh, than our brains. Maybe our brain has another mechanism. We 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 don't find it for now. And for yeah, for building index for key value too, we are also working on that. The 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 key insight is that maybe we can. Uh, first, we focus on the inference part because training is. Uh, a different thing, but for inference part, inference parts, there are already some related work such as um, KV pruning, uh, maybe yeah. some KV quantization, and they, this are related to work. But we, we maybe we'll have a much simpler from uh, instead of using some ad hoc uh, observations or maybe uh, yeah. maybe some human defined uh, methods, uh, we can use some. Data, uh, vector database uh, technique to auto automatically find that the most related case and we can calculate the uh, softmax tension uh, with, with, without some uh, human designed methods and and building index here is is it very is very good on that and we, we have proven that uh, maybe uh, first if we forget about the real Inference speed uh, building index for key value retrieval, which is uh, this uh, almost comparable performance with dense patterns uh, across attention. Uh, we have proved that, and may, uh, and in the future we will focus on the uh, yeah uh, system part. I, I think it's promising, but uh, there are also possibilities that we, because of it, maybe it it will be slower, but. Uh, I, 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 yeah, we should try that. Yeah, all good. I guess final one from me is like, obviously this is um, more grounded and being able to provide benefits for today's hardware. But do you, yeah, do, do, do you think that in in a similar way that in a similar way that Bitnet is um, is maybe making people rethink about how actually to design AI inference chips entirely. Maybe you, you can like have much lower bit representation. Um, I mean, you make a mention about um, this, um, the importance of SRAM. What, what, if you were gonna design, if you're gonna redesign hardware, taking all of the findings from Yoko, what would the key insight be about what hardware should do differently than it is today? Um, so that it can use these findings optimally, basically. 
Yeah, for inference, uh, uh, if we use local inference in today's GPUs for uh, maybe H100, maybe we spend uh, most of the cost in maybe we have a large uh, HBM and maybe, yeah, maybe HGB. And for Yoko, maybe we don't need that much. <laughs> for example, if Yoko has a very, very, very response as well. Uh, and that yeah. is the price. Maybe you can say uh, for now, uh, for today's larger Lego models. And for, yeah. and yeah, if we use save some HBM for today's GPUs, maybe we can, uh, we can put more cost into the SRAM. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because the in inference, the most of the computation is memory bounded. So if we say memory, yeah. we say everything. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Really cool. And look, I said final one, but the final one, sorry, final, final one. Out of these future bullet points, which is the one that you're most excited about and which is the one that you're kind of going to start working on next, do you think? Maybe probably all of them in parallel, but which of these future directions is top of your list, you think? Uh, I think the the second one and the third one maybe is a system work, maybe a system and uh, algorithm co-design work, and yeah, yeah. and for yeah for filters the diagram like the model capabilities maybe multiple modality is a more, more promising direction and I believe yeah. some people will agree with me. Yeah, yeah. and what, what about what about what you're going to be doing? Though? Like, would you, do you know which direction you're going to going to steer in with the next work as you continue your PhD, most likely? Uh, maybe and um, yeah, I'm working on that uh, because you know if we use multi-modality pretty yeah. it, it's, it's, yeah, it's basically a difficulty in today's multi-modality because for maybe yeah. we use lava, uh, it's just like a alignment between yeah. the models and other. And it's probably maybe even strong as well because obviously the speed are issues are even exaggerated further when it comes to kind of video and image and everything and and lots of different. Um, so so I guess. Um, yeah, I think that sounds like a very good, a very good area. Um, okay, well, um, I think we can probably, probably wrap up there. Um, again, let's give a very big round of applause for, uh, really top work. Um, I know that, uh, yeah, this is, um, I don't know, like, I, I, I do feel as though we're at the beginning or in the middle of a kind of new Moore's law to some extent with how much we're driving down cost, improving speed. There's clearly so much um, innovation to be had when it comes to making the kind of transform architecture faster at inference. So I, I yeah, what this unlocks in the years to come, obviously hardware moves quite slowly, but we, we have the insights that hardware can and should be redesigned and rethought. And obviously when that catches up to the kind of findings at the systems level, then I think we're gonna have, yeah, like very abundant AI. I guess that this kind of observation that AI and intelligence will be kind of as abundant as electricity or something does start to seem, seem to be the case when we see how much further we can push things. So yeah, all, all very exciting to see what's ahead. Um, anyway, thank you again, um, Yutao for joining. Really great pleasure to have you. Would love to have you again. I'm sure you're gonna keep knocking knocking out of the park with all the papers uh yeah so we'd love to have you again when you get the next killer paper out but um for now i'll let you get some sleep i know it's very late over in tokyo right now but it was a real <laughs> pleasure to have you join us uh have you join us today uh, thanks a lot for joining yeah thank you thank you for inviting of course thanks a lot have a good day everybody see you guys next week bye-bye